When Choni and Malik, two young brothers, tried to help their sick mother and afford food, they found themselves at the center of a troubling misunderstanding. After being reported by a neighbor, the police arrived at their doorstep to investigate, casting a shadow of suspicion over their actions. Stay tuned to unveil what happens next. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories. In the heart of Detroit, amidst the crumbling facades and the stark contrasts of life's fortunes, Choney and Malik Black navigate their youth. The city's gritty backdrop mirrors their struggles, a daily testament to their resilience. Born into a threadbare existence where the echoes of their father's departure linger and their mother's mental battles cast long shadows, the brothers embody the essence of hope amidst despair. Choney, at 16, carries the weight of the world with a quiet determination, his shoulders squared against the challenges. Malik, just a year younger, matches his brother's courage step for step, his eyes alight with dreams of a future untainted by their present adversities. Their bond, forged in the fires of their shared trials, is their refuge. The love for their mother, Barbara, a beacon in their darkest nights, and their unwavering support for one another are the threads that knit their world together. Barbara, the mother of Choni and Malik, faced an uphill battle every day. Struggling with the weight of depression, she found solace in her work as a housemaid, but the meager earnings were barely enough to cover their basic needs, let alone the cost of essential medications. Despite the constant strain, Barbara's unwavering love for her sons shone through. She would often return home, her eyes weary from the long hours, yet her heart filled with a fierce determination to provide for her family. Choni and Malik could see the toll it took on her, the way her shoulders slumped with the burden of their circumstances. In the quiet moments, when the boys were tucked into bed, Barbara would allow herself a moment of vulnerability. She would sit on the edge of the mattress, her fingers gently brushing through their hair as she whispered words of encouragement and reassurance. I may not have much, my darlings, she would say, but I have you, and that is everything. Choni and Malik, though young, understood the sacrifices their mother made. They would often offer to help, taking on odd jobs or running errands, their small hands eager to lighten the load. Their unwavering support and love for Barbara were the beacons that guided her through the darkest of days, reminding her that she was not alone in this fight. Despite the challenges, Barbara's resilience shone through. She refused to let the darkness of depression consume her, drawing strength from the bright eyes and hopeful smiles of her sons. Together, they weathered the storms, their bond growing stronger with each passing day, a testament to the power of family and the unbreakable spirit of a mother's love. But life's not always as we wish. Barbara fell gravely ill, and the meager earnings from her work as a housemaid could no longer cover the cost of her treatment, let alone provide for the basic necessities of her family. Choni and Malik, their hearts heavy with worry for their mother, found themselves facing a familiar foe, hunger. The gnawing pangs were a relentless reminder of their dire circumstances, yet it was this very hunger that propelled them forward, guiding them toward a decision that would alter the course of their lives. With hope as their beacon, the boys stepped beyond the boundaries of their existence, venturing into an affluent part of town, a world away from their own. Their aim was simple, to exchange labor for food. This quest led them to a chance meeting with Matt, a man whose arms were laden with groceries, a symbol of abundance that was foreign to the brothers. Their request was met with surprise, but it was their honesty and palpable need that touched Matt, prompting an act of kindness that spiraled into something much greater. Matt's decision to help the boys went beyond mere charity. It became a conduit for connection. As he invited Choni and Malik to fill a cart with necessities, he opened a window into their lives, glimpsing the depths of their struggles and the strength of their spirits. This encounter, rooted in compassion, grew into a lifeline not just for the brothers, but for Matt as well, knitting their lives together in unforeseen ways. As they finished buying supplies, Matt offered to drive them home.
Choni and Malik gratefully accepted. As they settled into the car, the boys began to open up, sharing their story with Matt. Mom works so hard, but it's never enough, Malik said, his voice barely above a whisper. She cleans houses all day, but we still go hungry sometimes. Choni, sitting beside him, nodded in agreement. And then, a few weeks ago, Mom got really sick. We were so scared, we didn't know what to do. Matt listened intently, his heart going out to the boys as they recounted their struggles. He could see the pain in their eyes, the weight of their responsibilities. We tried to take care of her, but we couldn't. We don't know how, Malik said, his voice cracking with emotion. We didn't have any money for the doctor, so we just prayed she would get better. As they drove through the streets, Matt's car became a confessional, a safe space for the boys to share their story. They told him about their father's departure, about their mother's mental battles, and about the daily struggles they faced. Matt listened, his expression a mix of sadness and determination. He knew that he had to do more to help these boys and their mother in any way he could. As they approached their home, Matt made a silent promise to himself. He would be there for them, to support them through the tough times and to help them build a better future. As dawn broke over Detroit, casting a soft glow on the streets that Choni and Malik once roamed in search of sustenance, the city awoke to a story that tugged at the heartstrings. Matt, moved by his encounter with the two brothers, took to social media to share their tale of resilience and his moment of unexpected connection. His words, meant to inspire and foster empathy, quickly rippled through the community, reaching far beyond the screens it was shared on. However, not all eyes that perused the tale saw it through the lens of compassion. Suspicion, like a shadow, crept into the heart of a neighbor who, upon recognizing the setting and its characters, saw not a story of kindness, but a narrative marked by mistrust and misunderstanding. The nature of the boy's presence in their affluent part of town was called into question, and the neighbor, driven by fear and prejudice, dialed the authorities painting Choni and Malik not as figures of sympathy, but as objects of suspicion. The police officers, their faces set in stern expressions, stood at the threshold of the black family's home. Their knuckles rapped sharply against the weathered door, shattering the fragile peace that had settled over the household. As the door creaked open, revealing the worried faces of Barbara and her sons, the officers stepped forward, their uniforms crisp and imposing. Ma'am, we need to speak with Choni and Malik, the lead officer said, his voice authoritative yet laced with an undercurrent of suspicion. Barbara, her eyes wide with fear, ushered the boys forward, her hands trembling. Choni and Malik, their shoulders squared with a quiet determination, faced the officers, their expressions guarded. We've been told you were seen in the affluent part of town asking for work, the officer continued, his gaze sweeping over the boys. Is that true? Choni, his voice steady despite the pounding of his heart, replied, Yes, sir. We were looking for odd jobs to help our family. The officer's eyes narrowed, his lips pressed into a thin line. And how exactly did you come to be in that neighborhood? Malik, his eyes alight with a mixture of fear and defiance, spoke up. We were just trying to find work, to help our mom. She's sick, and we don't have much money. The officers exchanged a glance, their expressions unreadable. We've also heard that a man, Matt, took you shopping and helped you out. Is that correct? Choni nodded, his fingers curling into fists at his sides. Yes, sir. He saw us struggling and wanted to help. The lead officer's brow furrowed, his lips twisting into a frown. And you expect us to believe that? Two young boys in a neighborhood they don't belong being helped by a stranger. Barbara, her voice trembling, stepped forward. Please, officers, my sons are good boys. They would never do anything wrong. They were just trying to help our family. At that moment, the officers realized they found nothing suspicious. And after seeing the family's dire situation, the lead officer, his expression softening, turned to Barbara and her sons. Ma'am, we've looked into the situation and it appears there's been a misunderstanding. Choni and Malik, their shoulders slumped with relief, 
exchanged a glance, their eyes reflecting the weight of the ordeal they had endured. The officer continued, his voice tinged with regret. We received a call about two boys in your neighborhood and we had to follow up. But after speaking with you and seeing your living situation, we understand now that you were just trying to help your family. Barbara, her hands trembling, reached out to grasp her son's hands, drawing strength from their presence. Thank you, officer, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. We're just trying to get by, day by day. The officer nodded, his expression somber. I can see that, ma'am. And I want you to know that we're here to help, not to make things harder for you and your family. He turned to Choni and Malik, his gaze filled with a newfound respect. You boys are doing a good thing, looking out for your mom like this. Don't let anyone make you feel ashamed of that. Choni, his eyes shining with unshed tears, managed a small smile. Thank you, sir. We're just trying to survive, like everyone else. The officer returned the smile, his own eyes reflecting a glimmer of understanding. I hear you, son, and I promise we'll do what we can to make sure you and your family get the support you need. As the officers departed, the weight of the ordeal lifted from the black family's shoulders. They knew that the journey ahead would still be fraught with challenges, but in that moment, they felt a glimmer of hope. A reminder that even in the darkest of times, there were those who were willing to listen, to understand, and to lend a helping hand. Yet amidst this turmoil, the story of Choni and Malik, shared by Matt, stood as a beacon, challenging each individual to look beyond their biases and embrace the power of empathy. The unsettling visit from the police, rather than closing doors for the brothers, inadvertently opened the floodgates of communal discourse. What began as a distressing misunderstanding quickly evolved into a watershed moment for the broader community, stirring a collective awakening to the values of empathy, support, and mutual understanding. Matt's act of sharing the boy's plight on social media, intended as a beacon of awareness, became a rallying cry that reverberated far beyond the confines of their neighborhood. As the truth of the black family's hardships unfolded in the public eye, the narrative took on a life of its own. Matt's post, once a simple recount of an encounter born from kindness, morphed into a viral sensation, touching the hearts of strangers near and far. It wasn't just a story being shared, it was a call to action, a reminder of the profound impact of collective empathy. The GoFundMe campaign that Matt had initiated as a modest attempt to alleviate the family's immediate struggles swiftly ballooned, fueled by the generosity of those moved by the boy's resilience and aspirations. The influx of support was transformative, not just in the tangible sense of funds raised, but in the ripples it created within the community and beyond. It demonstrated vividly how empathy, when mobilized, can transcend barriers, dismantle prejudices, and foster a shared sense of humanity. The funds became a foundation upon which the black family could rebuild, a lifeline to education, stability, and the nurturing of Choni and Malik's dreams of entrepreneurship. This unfolding of events stood as a testament to the potency of kindness in its most unadulterated form. In the depths of their darkest dreams, when the path forward seemed obscured by shadows of doubt and hardship, the black family found themselves at the heart of a community rekindled by hope. The support that cascaded in from all corners did more than just provide. It illuminated the path toward a future the boys had only dared to dream of. It underscored a powerful truth that within the collective heart of humanity lies an inexhaustible wellspring of kindness, capable of guiding us towards healing, understanding, and the realization of dreams that once seemed unattainable. And that was all for today's story. If you liked it, make sure to turn on the notification bell for more moving stories. Until the next time.